Hello and welcome back to our channel CBIT. Today we are going to be adding some stock items to our EPOS system, showing you how to set up the different groups and the actual products within the groups. If you haven't seen our other videos on setting up the system initially and customizing it, and watch our previous videos on how to do that. Okay, we're going to log in as the administrator. Um, first of all, we're going to add some item groups in. So we need to go to the menu and stock. Click on categories. In here, you can create different categories. So being an IT company, I'm just going to create some basic categories and subcategories which we might be using. So go. systems. We don't want it as a subcategory. We're just going to leave it as it is. And we click save. That's our first category created. To create a new one, we have to click on the add new. Otherwise you overwrite the other one. So I'm going to say new PCs. I've created that. I actually wanted it as a subcategory. So all I do is like if I haven't set the, which category it wants to be in, which as you can see it's blank, I can just Select it, select the subcategory that I want, and click Save. Now I'm going to create another new item. Refurbish PCs, I want that under the systems again. Click Save. I'm going to have new laptops, I want that under the systems menu. Click save. And I've got refurbished laptops, which I want underneath the systems menu again. Click save. I'm going to want another top category. So I click new. And what I'm going to do in, I'm going to say hardware this site this time. As a top category, I'm going to create underneath that one a CPUs category underneath hardware and I'm going to have graphics cards. Again, this can all be customized for whatever sort of items you are selling on your system. I'm just doing this way because this is the sort of stuff that we sell. Okay, and you can have multiple subcategories going down, cascading down the system. So I want Intel CPUs, which I'm going to want underneath the CPUs menu. And we'll then stick AMD CPUs, again under the CPUs tab. I'm going to go for NVIDIA, can't spell, NVIDIA graphics card which is going to be underneath graphics cards, AMD graphics cards underneath there. Okay, to show you what this looks like, we go back to the sales screen. And on the left-hand side, you can see we've now got systems and hardware. If I click on the systems, we've got new laptops, new PCs, refurbished laptops and refurbished PCs. If we go into them, there's nothing in there. Go to hardware, we've got the CPUs. Click on that, we then got the options for AMD or Intel CPUs. Inside of them, we haven't got anything. Go back to the main category. But each of these options and um, these menus, you can 
change the picture of it. You can select it. Uh, I'm just going to select this one for a moment. Doesn't really matter. And you can add a picture of a graphics card or a bit of hardware or CPU. So instead of having the bog standard logo, you can have your own logo or graphic on each of the items. So now we've got categories, we need to add products into the categories. So for that, we've gone into the menu, we've gone into stock and we click products. We're going to create a new product. So we'll click on the plus sign. Now the reference, this can be whatever you want to put in for it. So what we can do, we are going to, I'm just going to put a, a single processor in for the moment. So in here, your reference, it could be something which you can easily recognize. I'm going to go AMD 5600G. The barcode, I would actually um, scan the barcode on the side of the box. Um, I don't have my barcode reader with me at the moment. and I don't have this actual device next to me so i am just going to make up a barcode for it okay that's not the correct barcode if that barcode did exist when i scan it on the system it will pull through this item i can then put in the actual name of this device so it's an amd Ryzen 5 5600G AM4 CPU. We then select which category we want it in. So this is an AMD CPU. We set what sort of VAT it's going to be or tax. So it's tax standard. We then need to say what price it's going to be on the system including VAT. So we put that in. It automatically sets the ex excluding VAT price. You can put in the amount it's cost you. Um, this is X VAT. So if I go, I don't know how much they are um, off the top of my head, but it, you can put in whatever you want. So if it cost me £165 and I'm selling it for £174.99 plus VAT, okay, it tells you how much profit you're making and what margin you're making on it, how much profit and how much margin. You can say where you've got it from. If you haven't got one, you can click on the plus supplier, enter in your supplier details, click save. And here, you can then click save. That's put the basic information in and it's pulled it through here so you know what you're doing. What it's done is it's put the reference followed by the name. At the moment, we've not filled anything else in. Okay. So what we can do is we can add an image to this. As you can see, try to keep image size to 250 by 200 pixel. I think the one I've got is a bit bigger than that. But if I click it is a lot bigger than that. Click that and click save. If we go and have a look at the actual item underneath hardware CPUs, AMD CPUs, you can see it's actually put the image on here and the bit in front of it is the actual device, the name which we put in. You can also change the cut size and the 
font and text of the text on the screw on the button. We make these changes in here. So this has added our first I stock item onto the till. So from the main sales page, if you wanted to sell that, there's multiple ways you can sell it. If you've got a barcode reader, you just scan the barcode and it pulls up the item and sticks it in here. If it's touch screen, you can click on the right menu, sub menu, sub sub menu, and the click on the button for the icon item and it puts it in for you. On here, it shows you what the item is, the X VAT price, how many units, how much VAT percentage is going to go on, and then the actual total including VAT. We had a second one, it just adds another line in for us. If you've scanned it or typed it twice, you can just click delete. That'll either delete the current order or you can click on the delete current line ticket and you have to put in the override code, which we set up earlier to then take the item off. You can search for an item if you're not sure where it's going to be. You can either search for the barcode or you can just search for everything. It's up to you. Um, if you know what it's called, you can search for that. Uh, see if I do AMD, execute, it's just pull that up. If it's if it's pens, type in the word pen and execute, it's found the pens one. You can then just select it, click OK and add it in. So you can scan it. You can go through the menu and find it or you can search for it. To add it into the actual main field. If you've scanned it or brought it into the system and the figure or some information is wrong, what we can do is we can edit it from within the screen. So if we went for the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G, we highlight it, we then click edit. We can either change the price. So I, it's not 209, it should have been 219 .99. It will add it in. We can either click the tick button, which will change it for this one transaction, or we can click update, which will actually update the database. So next time it gets scanned, it comes in with the correct price. This is an easy way of um, updating ticket prices for individual items, or if you need to adjust it on the fly. Things like that. So I'm just going to update this, which has then updated it in the back end. And it's updated it here. When I then went in and selected it again, it hasn't picked it up. Why has it not picked it up? It might be that I have to exit the software for it to pull up the price change. There we go. So once you've made the change, you do need to log out and log back in for it to pick up that price change for it to go on the next line. But it has updated it in the background. Um, you can also, instead of editing just the amount, you can edit the actual description as well. If there's a spelling mistake, you can correct it in here, click update and then save it. One place where this might be handy, especially for our side of things, is if we've got a product, I'm going to create a new product. Never guess what this one's going to be. It's going to be a custom PC. 
Of course, we don't know how much each custom PC is going to be. Oops. Put that in the uh, new PC section. Under systems, new PCs, we've got our custom PC. Because every PC is going to be custom made, um, it'll have a custom price. So this is the perfect place to make the change. So one customer might be 600, another customer might be 1000. What we can do is in here, we can then make the change for the relevant amount. And we can then put a bit more information on here. So basic uh, basic details and I don't want it to update in the back end I just want it for this particular transaction put it on the tick and it's pulled it through so it's a custom pc with an amd 5600 g 16 gig of ram one terabyte ssd win tempo and rtx 3060 don't know what if this price is anywhere near that sort of thing at the moment because prices are fluctuating but it's just for an example and then the customer will pay for it so next time you come in you haven't updated the main custom PC ticket it's still 600 pound um, but you can come in and you can put your spec in once they've paid for it and you've printed off the receipt you can then go back in and you can look at uh, let me just pay for that okay so that couldn't print that receipt for that's because we haven't got a receipt printer I can go in and search for previous tickets for this day, open it up and what we can go through and we can edit this. So I can click on it, you can see what you've sold and you can edit it or you can cancel the full ticket, you can do a refund on here going to come out of there Got an option here to refund ticket so I can click on that I can either do the item the line or all I'm just going to click all it pulls it all through do the click on the equal sign you make the refund okay don't worry about this warning because that's just because I've got the printer on prints it and then that receipt is now gone. So we've done that refund for that customer. So we've added new stock on this one. We've added new categories. We've added stock to the categories. Um, we've made it so we can show you how to edit the stock on the fly or update it through the, into the back end as well. You know how to make a sale and do a refund. Thank you for watching. If you like this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and hit the bell notification for upcoming videos. Thank you very much.